North Korea is officially known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, but there isn't anything democratic in this country. People of North Korea seem to live far back in the third world. Let's have a look at a day in the life of people in North Korea. To see how people in North Korea spent their lives is like trying to see whether the light bulb inside a refrigerator is on after closing the door. But people who manage to flee have their stories to describe life in North Korea. Let's first look into the life of people in the capital of North Korea, Pyongyang. Pyongyang is often described as the base of the North Korean Revolution. Normally, the day in Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea, starts at 6 a.m. Due to rationing done by the government, the food supplies are often low and people face malnutrition. Usually, breakfast consists of corn or maize porridge. If they are lucky enough, sometimes might get a chance to have cooked eggs and yogurt for adults and powdered milk for the kids and youngsters. Soon after breakfast, most of the population starts getting ready for the day ahead. Almost 60 to 62 percent of the total population in North Korea is working. Most white-collar jobs are done by women. 90% of women in cities work as industry workers, whereas 80% of women from rural areas are working class. In North Korea, in most households, women are the earning members and providers for their families. Not only that, but they also take care of their families. Most of these women either work as employees or are soldiers. The reason behind this is that everyone healthy must serve in the military. Did you know that the North Korean government decides your hairstyle? Astonishing, right? Barbershops are run under the government and only permissible hairstyles are allowed. This is the case for both men and women. Some 10 hairstyles for men and 18 for women. That's just the tip of the iceberg. More bizarre interferences of the government and public life are yet to come. The term fashion is irrelevant to North Korea. Most apparel styles in North Korea are designed by the Apparel Research Center that comes under the National Light Industry Committee. The amazing thing about the outfit is that you can define the status of people seeing their clothes and belongings. For example, a person wearing a Japanese watch is someone who holds a powerful position in the government, whereas a person wearing watches of other foreign brands has a high-ranking position. The cherry on the cake. Wearing blue jeans is forbidden in North Korea because it represents American imperialism. To limit the Western influence on its citizens, the nation has also prohibited piercings. North Korean people have to follow a daily ritual. They have to wear a Kim Il-sung badge on their lapel. These badges were introduced in the late 1960s for members of the ruling party by the Mansuede Art Studio. Some of these popular badges are sold in the black market for a few hundred North Korean won. The majority of the streets in the capital city of North Korea have pragmatic high-rise buildings. These structures vary from 20 to 40 floors. Those living on upper floors have to wake up earlier than those living on lower floors for going to school or for work. The main reason behind this is that the elevators operate intermittently. Not only that, there are frequent power outages and people have to use the stairs. For adults and youngsters, it is fine, but it becomes a problem for old age people. Often adult members of the family choose to live on higher floors to shift elderly relatives to lower floors. Usually it is tough to find empty lower floors and often requires bribery. The lives of people, especially elderly people, resemble that of a prison. According to a report by the UN, North Korean people face persistent food shortages. The food rationing, which was 380 grams of grain previously, was reduced to 300 grams. Imagine this amount of food to sustain a complete. Thus, elderly people share their rations with their grandkids. This weakens the elderly more, eventually making them stuck at home. There are few car owners in North Korea. 
only a few individuals drive to work. Therefore, the peak hours conjunction is not a serious issue. Another example of government oppression comes from the police. Even though there are very few cars, police vigorously enforce traffic laws and issue penalties. Fines consist of two-week pay cuts. The majority of automobiles belong to government agencies, but government officials use it as if they were privately owned. There are some strict rules for vehicles entering the capital city of North Korea. All vehicles entering Pyongyang must be clean or else they have to face fines. Drunk driving carries a penalty of hard labor, whereas smoking is completely prohibited while driving. The basic reason is that due to smoking habits, smoking drivers cannot sense or smell any leakage or similar problems in the vehicle. Not only that, but traveling outside the city is also restricted. People require a travel certificate to leave and enter Pyongyang. Most of the population in North Korea is middle class and owns a bicycle. The economic condition of the people in North Korea is bad, and a normal bicycle's price is equal to wages of several months. Thus, only the privileged can afford imported second-hand Japanese bicycles. At 7.30 after breakfast, many North Koreans begin their day with a 30-minute reading session or workout. It is their normal routine to read the daily editorial published by the government. A school day for children starts with a mix of activities like singing populist songs, a march past, and honoring the leader of the country by saluting their picture. The curriculum of the North Korean school is based on Kim's thesis on socialist education that focuses on teaching them the political significance of leaders and cultivating revolutionary spirit in children. The social position of parents plays an important role in admission to college. Moreover, the future of the children is also decided by the state. The state selects where graduates will work after graduation. Most of the offices in Pyongyang begin at 8 a.m. Pyongyang is the biggest hub for white-collar jobs. When we hear the word office work, computers, desks, and all things come to mind. But an office in Pyongyang is astonishingly scant. Computers, photocopiers, and contemporary office equipment are practically non-existent in banks, industrial organizations, and corporations. All accounting and payroll processing is done manually, just like our ancestors used to do it. Around noon, lunch break is observed for an hour at factories and offices. Generally, employees bring their lunch from home or go to dine at home if they live nearby. Larger companies have a canteen that serves inexpensive lunches, including corn soup, corn cake, and oatmeal. Pyongyang stays unusually barren throughout the working day with no busy lunchtime periods as observed in other cities across the world due to the policy of eating at work canteens. Shopping is a sporadic activity in the city of North Korea. You can't think of buying things later because they will soon be sold out. According to those who left North Korea, normal families need only five chests and seven appliances a quilt chest, wardrobe, bookcase, cupboard, and shoe closet are among the chests, while TV, refrigerator, washing machine, electric fan, sewing machine, tape recorder, and camera are among the appliances. The average family has only a few appliances, generally a television and a sewing machine. It seems that these oppressed North Korean people live on minimalism. Shopping for food is also a challenge. Supply of essential food ingredients like soy sauce, soybean paste, salt, and oil is scarce. Many of the daily essentials such as toothpaste, soap, undergarments, and shoes are always in short supply. There are very few options for North Koreans. Vegetables like white cabbage, cucumber, and tomatoes are easily available, but meat and eggs are rarely available. When we go to supermarkets, we find almost a range of fruits, but that is not the case for North Koreans. Apples and pears are the only fruits available in North Korea. 
Rice, being the staple diet of the North Koreans, is easily available, whereas corn, maize, mushrooms, bread, and butter are occasionally accessible. Even though office hours are complete around 5 p.m., people are required to remain in the office or factory for the daily community session and learning session. Community sessions in the office after work involves discussion of the day's work, evaluation of process, and planning of the next day. Usually, these sessions are political and include a political ideology learning session to disseminate party policy. It is mandatory to attend demonstrations or marches. In December, longer meetings are held to take stock of the year. Most people reach home by 8 p.m. During winter, to keep themselves warm, remove their street clothes and put on layers of undergarments and shirts. Apartments are drafty, causing inhabitants to use plastic sheets to cover the windows. Often, hot water is used to heat apartment buildings, whereas charcoal briquettes are used to heat residences. But when the electric supply is suspended, they are unable to keep their homes warm. The majority of locals wear their winter garments all day and even sleep in them. Quilts are made using chicken or duck feathers, but they aren't easily available. Unavailability of power supply is the main topic of discussion among the locals. Most parts of Pyongyang have an intermittent supply system, which means that when buildings on one side of the street face power cut, the other side of the street will have a power supply. To tactfully manage these power cuts, children and sometimes youngsters move to their friends and relatives living on the other side of the road. Usually, when we feel lonely or bored, we call our friends and relatives. But for these North Koreans, even social communication is a challenge. The majority of phone calls are routed through operators. Most of these operators are women, as it is one of the popular employment for them. It allows them to get first access to rumors and information before other workers. Only high-ranking officials have personal phones. The day ends at 10 p.m. for most people in North Korea. The scarcity of entertainment venues and continuous electricity shortages make North Korea's capital city Pyongyang a ghost city. Everything from views, sentiments, and even emotions are suppressed by the government. By seeing the pictures of the country, which are often propagated, it is hard to believe what the defectors say about their life in North Korea. Those who are successful in fleeing the country bear witness to torture and repression. This is how a day in the life of a North Korean is. We were lucky enough not to be born in these borders. Hope you enjoyed the video, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on other interesting topics.